this portion of the tutorial, we'll be looking at a bi and trivariate parametric volumetric demo. It has been suggested that ignoring the correlation of variables in the volumetric equation, which uses average values, can lead to incorrect volumetric estimates. We'll be looking at a parametric Excel calculator that takes the correlated variables into account. We're in Worksheet 2A, Parametric Terms. So, as we've mentioned, the parametric term is used when we have variables that are correlated in the volumetric equation. So, for example, we have porosity and hydrocarbon saturated are correlated, and we're going to apply a bivariate parametric solution. If we look at the equation for doing the parametric evaluation, it's the mean of the porosity times the mean of the saturation plus the correlation coefficient times the standard deviations of these two terms. To the left, we have an area where you can copy and paste your porosity, your saturation and net to gross values from your well. And then over here, the mean of the porosity and the saturation are calculated. The correlation coefficient is calculated and is the standard deviation of porosity and saturation. Normally, when we do a volumetric, we would just multiply these two mean values together, and this would be your term here for the porosity saturation. If we look closely here, we see that in this example, the two terms are closely correlated at a 0.9988 correlation coefficient. And the standard deviations are not very wide. So it turns out that this term is very small, so 0 0.0001. So that is this term right up in here, where we would add this onto the mean. In this case here, if the porosity and saturation had a very wide range of values, then this term would be very large and would have a big impact on the calculated term for phi s. I should note that a small difference in this phi s term can have a large impact on the volumes that are calculated in your volumetric equation. To the right, we have the trivariate parametric solution. And if we look at the equation here, we can see that this is getting a lot more complicated. And it gets a little bit cumbersome, but the calculator will work on this. And here is where you calculate the terms. Here I'm showing you what the usual volumetric term would look like if you just multiplied the net to gross, the porosity, and saturation together. And it's, no, it's really not much different than what we have here. So again, in this data set, the difference or the spread of the data for porosity, net to gross, and saturation is not very wide. I'm going to switch over to another workbook that shows an example where there's a lot more heterogeneity in the net to gross, porosity, and saturation terms. So now we're in a worksheet that has the example data from Ma 2018, where he demonstrates this technique for using the parametric terms. So here we can see that the correlation coefficient between porosity and saturation is still somewhat high, but the standard deviations are high as well. So when this is high, and these numbers are high, the, the correlation coefficient standard deviation term of the equation gets to be fairly large. So normally we'd have something like 0 0.0338, but in this case here we have 0 0.0476. So this is making a big difference in the volumetrics that would be calculated. Switching back to our calculator worksheet, Let's go back and let's take a look at what a volumetric would look like when we use this term. And so I've put in here the, the new phi H, phi SH terms for the bivariate and the trivariate solutions and comparing it to what we would normally have gotten with our volumetric run. 
and we can see here that there's virtually no difference in the volumetric solution for the example we've been looking at. Adding the net to gross, we see that it does make a difference here, and that is because in our previous examples, when we did our calculation, we had a net to gross of one, and here we're varying the net to gross a little bit. So I'd like to point out a few of the other features that are in this workbook. I've included in here the key trivariate equations from MA 2018, just to make them a little bit more readable. Uh, here's a box that talks a little bit about the example data that we're using. So what I did for this example is I copied the porosity from the example Monte Carlo simulator, the 10,000 trials that we, that we looked at earlier. And then I used a transform for phi to hydrocarbon saturation based on a buckles technique. I'll go into that a little bit later here in a moment. And I used a transform of phi to net to gross based on the data set from MA 2018. And here I kind of show what this what this looks like. And what it's basically saying that I'm not letting the curve get greater than one, and I'm not letting the the uh, the net to gross get below zero. So that's all this equation does here. In one of the sensitivities that I ran, I copied the porosity from the Monte Carlo simulator and used the porosity SH relationship shown here and the porosity net to gross relationship and calculated out what the bivariate and trivariate volumetric solutions would be. And what I found was it made a huge difference up to 15% in the bivariate increase in the volumetrics and up to 8% in the trivariate. In figure 2, I'm showing you what the relationship of porosity and hydrocarbon saturation is using this Buckles technique where I've used a Buckles constant of 0 0.05 which is sort of standard for a, for a fine grain sandstone. And basically you're seeing the same chart here as we saw above on what the effect is on the calculated volumes. And finally I have added another figure here, another sensitivity, where I'm looking at what the effect of a 0 0.05 change in the phi s term on the bivariate parametric solution would be on a volumetrics. So I've kept this, this, this part of the term constant calculated the in-place volumes, looked at the delta in barrels, and then as a percent. And it's looking like a 0 0.05 change in the phi S term produces a 3 to 4 percent change in the volumetric solution. So in summary, as Ma pointed out, that if we ignore the correlation of these volumetric terms, we would end up getting an incorrect volume estimate. So he offered the parametric approach that takes into account these correlations. The other thing to consider here is how would we use this parametric term in an actual volumetric estimation? In which case you'd calculate the parametric terms for each well in your study and then you could either map that out to look how it varies spatially in the field and use that in a map-based volumetric assessment or you would average the correlated terms and use that in your singular volumetric equation.